Okay. So now start in neutral. Uh, I think this is my neutral. Okay. So she thinks this is neutral. Is it neutral? A little flexion. A little flexed. So now let's see if it was just kind of her muscle tension. So tilt your pelvis back and forth. Back and forth. Good. So good pelvic tilt. Nice. All right. Settle in neutral. <laughs> a little better. A little better. Yeah, because she heard. We already. She already started learning. But now, follow me. Drop that a little bit, right, right about there. Okay, how's that feel? It feels like I'm in anterior. Feels like she's in anterior. So this is, because her mind map has might has mapped neutral as being in slight flexion. So every time she goes into neutral, she's actually in slight flexion. And when I bring her into what I think is neutral, she feels like she's anteriorly pelvic tilted or in extension, okay? Therefore, when she does her quadruped rock, go ahead and sit back. It's better, but she drops into flexion right away because her nervous system saying, I want neutral. Okay? And tell them about your experience in Pilates. Oh, um, in Pilates, every time I do any sort of movement, um, they have to put me back into neutral. Okay. So. Now, Pilates, there's some awareness in Pilates, but it's form-based awareness. Pilates is primarily a stability training, and it's an excellent stability training, and they actually do stability through range. But how long have you been doing that? A month. Oh, about a month? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I thought it was going to be years. <laughs> All right. So, so maybe it's only been a month because it takes a little time for the body to remap a neutral. But people can do Pilates for years and still not have a proper sense of what neutral is because if every time the Pilates instructor corrects you, she does it for you. And then you go into stability training. So you, you may not have the chance for your nervous system to try and discover where neutral is. So that's where you can focus on motor control training on unstable surfaces, disrupting, and then visually check to see where you are. So you train your nervous system to try and remap what neutral is. Okay, there's nothing wrong with get being corrected and now training in neutral. That's good stability training, but it doesn't always carry over into motor learning. All right, so that's where you might integrate some motor learning. A month is a bit unfair, so I can't make that judgment because it might not be enough time yet. But if, let's say, three months goes by and you still don't have a sense of neutral, you have to do some motor training to train where your neutral is. Because they just want you, I would assume the teacher just wants her to, like, wants you to, like, be successful in the exercise. So she's not necessarily, like, worried about, or she probably is more than one person, right? In the, yeah, it's the same person. Oh, okay. So the, it's the Pilates philosophy. You're, and, and luckily now, Pilates has shifted into neutral training. They used to do imprint the pelvis into the bed and do very flexion bias training. So the focus is to enhance stability. And they want to start from neutral spine, but the focus is very stability training and stability through range training. So she's following Pilates' principle. What I'm saying is it's all higher load. They're going for fatigue. They want to enhance the endurance. Mm -hmm. So you might need to layer in some awareness training as well. Okay? So there are different types of dissociation uh, tests and exercises. You have them on the big handout, but also some here where you might go through hip extension to see if the lumbar spine goes into an extension give. You have some people that actually go into a flexion give. You have a lot of people that will go into a rotation give. And here the rotation give will look like pelvic rotation. Okay? But remember, any movement in the pelvis, we're going to name it by the lumbar spine. So imagine I'm prone. If I go to lift this leg and my pelvis does this, what is that? Of what? It's a lumbar rotation give. Okay? Yeah. Now, I won't do this to you on the exam, but if my pelvis does this and I'm lying flat, what direction did I just give into? So it's rotation, which direction? How many people say right rotation give? How many people say left rotation give? What, how many people aren't voting? How many? <laughs> why left rotation give? Because you're giving into. What do you mean? What's going that way? Your pelvis. So if I'm standing and I do this. Isn't it your left internal rotators that aren't working? Wait, that's a competition. Or your left, something's not working. Something's not, I'm, on, I'm only asking you the direction of rotation. I move my leg and that happens. Just say right. Which direction is the pelvis facing? Right. right. But 
if I correct my pelvis, how do we name rotation? We always name the motion by the superior bone. So if I'm prone, my chest is on the mat, my pelvis can rotate away, but this is actually left lumbar rotation. Because if I put my pelvis in neutral, my lumbar spine is facing left. Okay? So I'm not going to put that on the test, but you will need to think about that in the clinic. When you see a relative motion, the pelvis moving, you have to think about what's the actual direction. It's just like, and this part will be on the test, if the pelvis posteriorly pelvic tilts, what kind of lumbar direction is that? Lumbar flexion. Lumbar flexion, because it's relative flexion. If the pelvis goes into anterior pelvic tilt, what kind of motion is in the lumbar spine? Lumbar extension. Extension, because it's relative lumbar extension. Okay? So rotation always messes people up, so you will have to think about that, but not for this final. Okay? So there are many different uh, dissociation tests you can do. The prone knee curl is Shirley Sarman's classic one um, because what you're seeing is the anterior pelvic tilt that's happening here. So the rectus femoris is not lengthening, you're getting a compensation. So and this is an abdominal fail. What you're seeing on the right is the arms going over the head because if the, the lats are trying to lengthen, and if you have poor movement strategy, the back will arch, which will allow the late lats not to lengthen. Okay? Now, if the lats have plenty of range of motion, we don't know that. If the lats have plenty of range of motion, this is a motor control give. Because the lumbar spine extended before the lats fully lengthen. They have the ability to do it, but they're just not. If the lats are short, and when they get to this spot, if they stop, that's, this is it. This is actually good motor strategy. They just have short lats. So what would be the treatment there? Stretch. Stretching. But if someone who has short lats ends up like this because they're just insisting on getting the hand to the bed, this is a compensation. In order for the hands to get on the bed, the back had to extend. All right? And what they did is they started extending at the limit of the lats. So either way, you have to show them that they're not allowed to do that. They have to do it this way in order to truly get into lap lengthening. Okay? And this is the whole reason for dissociation tests. The one, uh, the, the one on the left is what of Shirley Sarman's classic, which is hip flexion without the lumbar going into posterior pelvic tilt. On the right, you're seeing a full arc quad. It's knee extension, and you're preventing the pelvis from giving into posterior anterior pelvic tilt. You can, do, uh, you can do other directions. So let's say in a functional test, someone gave into a side bending give, then you might want to check hip abduction dissociation because that's challenging lumbar side flexion. Okay? Remember, dissociation is proximal hold with distal movement. So if in your functional testing you saw a direction of give, pick a dissociation test that tests that direction. So if they went into a lumbar side bending give, check dissociation like this. Can they maintain their lumbar spine and stop it from side bending giving by challenging hip abduction? Okay? This is a rotation challenge. It's called the bent knee fallout because the knee is bent and it's falling out. Good name. And you need to maintain the rotation control of the trunk in order to allow the knee to fall out. All right.